Welcome to the warm-up presented by Seifert Orient's Funeral Home. I'm Mark Kuntz as we're here to talk Elida Bulldog football. Patrick Cameron will join us momentarily, but first we're here with Jason Carpenter beginning his eighth season as Elida's head coach. Thanks for coming on, coach. And, you know, we were talking earlier, you feel pretty confident where the team is right now, particularly as compared to where it was a year ago this time. Yeah, we're definitely uh, in a better place now than we were a year ago. Um, Talent-wise on defense, I think we're a little bit uh, more skilled. Um, the, the worry is the D-line because we did lose uh, three starters off the mm -hmm. D-line. Um, but they played well in our first scrimmage versus Fort Loramie. Um, I thought we got after it a little bit and um, played extremely well. There's a lot of little things that we can take care of. And uh, we're going to get a chance this Friday uh, versus Lyman Senior and LCC to um, correct those mistakes that we made in the first scrimmage. But, yeah, the overall uh, prospect of Elida football is uh, we're, we are better than we were a year ago today. Certainly, you look at that D-line, you, you lose Chance White, who's on playing at Bowling Green. What You've had Division One athletes the last several years at Elida. Can you see somebody on the team now that might be the next one to take that bulldog mantle into the top level of college football? Well, it, it's so hard to say because uh, certain teams are looking for things. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we have size-wise any anybody on the O-line, D-line uh, right now. Um, Skilled-wise, you know, I, I think we've got a couple guys that could be uh, possible D1 athletes, but um, you just never know what teams are looking for, and so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best to, to get them recruited, and I think the guys know that uh, with the past history of guys playing football. Um, but, you know, it's, it's hard to say, um, it, but all it takes is a breakout season for guys to catch some attention. Absolutely. Offensively, you've got uh, Clark Etzler as well as Logan Alexander both coming back. Yeah, I mean, and they've looked good all summer um, in the seven-on-sevens that we've participated in. And uh, I think Logan's getting better at his reads. Um, definitely took a step forward in the scrimmage, um, you know, getting away from pressure situations. And, um, you know, Clark's a pretty dynamic player. We're going to find a lot of different ways to get him the ball. Um, but you can't be a one-man show. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some other really talented wide receivers that go along with them. That's going to ease the pressure off of uh, just teams focusing in on Clark. We've got Christian Moran back, 6'3", uh, 190 pound right. uh, senior who, uh, before his injury, uh, Kenton Week, he was second or third in the league in receiving yards. So um, that's, that's huge for him to be on this, you know, sometimes the same side as Clark to kind of take the pressure away. We've got um, uh, Brian Upshaw at wide receiver. We've got a freshman, Cole Harmon, who's gonna come in and play wide receiver for us as well. And uh, Henry Cuffey, a senior, who's gonna play tight end. So, you know, th those five right there are going to take a lot of pressure away from just teams focusing in on Clark. Certainly, Sean Quest Fry, a big part of the offense last year. What's the backfield looking like without Sean uh, We're going to have uh, Desmond White uh, come in and, and get some running plays for us and play running back. We've also got Peyton Smith, who played uh, defensive back for us. So we're kind of taking a couple defensive guys from that side of the ball and uh, putting them in at running back. But but they've looked good in the first scrimmage. I know uh, Peyton had a 39-yard touchdown on our inside zone, and uh, Desmond did a great job carrying the ball and, and getting some of the uh, yards after contact. So, you know, he's 5'6", uh, you know, 190 pounds, and he's tough to bring down. So uh, I, I think our run game is going to be pretty strong, um, but it's all about the O-line, making sure that they uh, communicate and get to their blocks and, and push people off the ball. Yeah, I think it's a testament to where this Elida program has come under your command, where last year's 5-5 five and five campaign is not acceptable. No, and, and uh, if you ask any of the guys that were on that team last year, it was a disappointment, um, and it should be. And, uh, you know, 5-5, five and five, when 5-5 five and five is a disappointing year, you know you got the program going in the right direction. And so I think our seniors came back hungry. Um, our off-season workouts, uh, attendance-wise, was wonderful and and you're going to see that result on the field because our guys are stronger faster and uh hopefully we're going to be a little bit more physical than we were last year division three school how's the numbers of kids coming out for football um we have uh 61 on the roster 62 on the roster um which for division three you want to see it in the 80s but you know, it's hard hard for uh our coaching staff to get 80 guys on the staff because we ask a lot of the kids in the off season to, mm -hmm. to get in the weight room and get stronger and get faster. So, if if people aren't if kids in our school are not willing to do that, then you know we're not 
willing to have them be a part of our team because I want guys who want to get better. And if they're not willing to get better, then there's no room for them on the team. You mentioned tri scrimmage coming up in just a few days on Friday. Then the opener, you travel up to Stadium Park to take mm -hmm. on St. John's. You had a weak, impressive week one win over the Blue Jays last year. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do between now and that first game against St. John's? Uh, stay healthy. Uh, correct the mistakes. We, we've got to stay healthy. Um, as much as we want a two platoon uh, with 22 starters, uh, that being the case, our backups on offense um, are the defensive players, and the backups on defense are our offensive players. So we want to stay healthy. We want to try and be two platoon as much as possible. So that way in the fourth quarter, our guys are fresh and ready to go and uh, win the game. So I think a lot of it is one, stay healthy, but two, we want to correct the mistakes that we made in the first scrimmage. And if we could do those things, I think we're going to be in the right place to uh, be able to take on St. John's. After opening at Delphus, next week back on the road taking on Defiance before the mm -hmm. week three opener at home against Wapkinet, a game you will see on WOSN. Having back-to-back -back road games to open up the season, does that almost force the team to have a little bit more focus going into the year? Well, I, other than the fact that we got to get on a bus and travel, um, I, th I think Mike Mock said it. Once you get on the field, the crowd, uh, the atmosphere, it doesn't really matter where you're at. And um, I, I think that's so true because the, the field is the same length. Um, you know, it's just 22 players on the field, and they're the ones determining whether the game is won or lost. So uh, whether we have to go on the road or we're at home, of course we'd like to be at home because our crowd is fabulous. But... Um, you know, it, it's nice to be able to get on the road, uh, get kind of away, and, and know that we can be, you know, one and zero at the end of the week, and then we come home to a huge crowd, hopefully for for uh, Wapakoneta. All right, thank you very much, Coach Carpenter. I need to take a break here on the Cipher to Orange warm up at Buffalo Wild Wings. When we come back, Patrick Cameron will join us to talk with some of the Elida players here in WOSN. For Orion's funeral show warm up show. I'm Patrick Kamler, joined with a couple of senior Bulldogs now from Elida. I've got with me Clark Etzler and Jared Blymeyer. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Talk about how practice has been going so far in the next year, few weeks leading up to the season starting. And I'll start with you. What have you guys been working on heading up to week one? Well, we've been working on our, on offensively, our pass blocking, our run blocking almost every day. Um, we're trying to get better run blocking almost every day on the offense side of the ball. And, um, on the offense side of the ball, we're doing really well with our run and pass reads, and hopefully we're ready week one. Clark, what about you? Um, this year just seems like we're learning more the smaller things to get better at. Last year, it was more we had to uh, learn everything. We had a bunch of new guys coming in this year. We're all a little bit more experienced, so it's a little bit easier to learn. You know, we just heard from Coach Carp that coming off a five and five season was unacceptable to you guys. What motivations have you taken from last year and put towards practice this year and getting ready for the season? Um, really, it's just those those close games, those nail biters that end up losing, and just those little things. And I mean, for me, it's just a loss is one thing you'll never forget. It's something that motivates you and pushes you in the weight room. And I definitely would. Much rather be better than five and five for sure. So, four and five in conference. How, does the does the conference record also kind of motivate you guys to get going and get fired up and, and get back into the WBL and finish higher than you did last year? Oh yeah, you always want to finish the top WBL. WBL is one of the best leagues around Northwest Ohio, one of the best leagues in the state, and you always want to be up there, top three for sure, and you want to contend every year. You guys circle any games on your calendar? I'll, I'll address you first. You guys circle any games on your calendar? Anything you're specifically looking forward to? Or are you guys focused on week one? Um, really right now, it's just more week one. But there's always those rivals like Bath and Shawnee that you're always looking forward to. That always fun games to be in. You, same question. Week one's always what you want to look forward to. But those Bath Shawnee games, Walpole should be a really good game this year. And Kenton, of course. We haven't beat Kenton for almost 30 years. And... Hopefully we get a shot at them this year, and let's go get it. All right, well, hey, guys, thanks a lot for joining us. When we come back, we'll talk to a couple more Bulldogs right here the Cypher Orion's warm-up on WOSN.
warm-up show. Here with a couple more senior Bulldogs, I've got with me Desmond White and Jesse Guerrero. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, no problem. First question, how do you like the new uniforms, man? You guys are breaking out the grays for this season. Uh, I like them. I think it's switching it up. They're real comfy, so. Yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty sweet, for real. I'm definitely going to be the nicest looking ones out there. It's <laughs> good, it's good. Talking about the season, you guys have had a few weeks in getting ready for week one, and I'll ask you the same thing I asked uh, the other guys earlier. What have you specifically been working on leading up to week one to get ready for the season? Uh, senior leadership, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, and make sure everybody's going 100%, putting work in, making us get better, and then also making our JVs get better so when we leave, they come up and be just as good as us. What about you, man? Uh, pretty much the same, just mostly leadership. Last year, we lacked on leadership a lot. That's why I think we went the 5-5 five and five season. So, so senior year, so we got to step up. And What specific ways, touching on leadership, what specific ways are you guys working on the senior leadership and making sure you guys are an example to the underclassmen? Uh, just getting everybody fired up before practice, just being excited for practice, trying to get better. What about you? Yeah, uh, if you're not going 100% making us better, then... Uh, just yell at them, just get them pumped up. Like sometimes we come out with low energy, get them pumped up so they give us a great look, just stuff like that. How much motivation have you guys drawn from finishing five and five last year? Uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you been able to look back at specific things from last year and specifically work on that stuff leading up to this year? Uh, just being smarter and actually uh, like last year took a couple practices off some people didn't try as hard and just give people good looks and then came out flat played bet to our or played to our best of abilities uh, I think the uh, biggest thing was last year at the beginning of games we always came out flat not fired up and we always had to come back at halftime so I think we just started on just getting on it right from the jump and it's not trying to come back. Just get on the team and don't let them up. Okay, sounds good. Thanks a lot. Good luck this season. That's going to wrap up our Cypher Orion's warm-up show. For Mark Coots, I'm Patrick Hamler. We'll see you next time.